Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we want to talk about uh, what we have on a board is basically we want to find out the uh, the capacity, one of the design capacity. This is a situation we have, which is a double share uh, bolt connection, and with the way the bolt pattern is, also uh, the capacity of the bolt, the plate, and the uh, and the glue lamp itself. So if you look at the problem we have, it's uh, we have this two steel plate about uh, one quarter inch by an eight inch wide and have a, a four row of a one bolt inch uh, uh, and then uh, the glue lamp is a 518 by 12 inch and a spacing between the bolts are both horizontally and vertically are four inch each and the spacing between the bolt last bolt and the end of the glue lamp is basically a uh, seven inches all right so let's get to work uh, first i'm going to write down all the design criteria i have for this uh, problem. So uh, uh, from uh, table, which I is the sum of the uh, um, design uh, criteria, we have d inch is equal to one inch. Uh, the, the thickness of the uh, uh, main number is a uh, five on uh, one point two five. <coughs> the angle is a zero degree angle. The FEM from NDS. Uh, uh, table 12.3.3 uh, you see on the board is 5,600 pounds and the uh, thickness of the steel plate on both sides is about one quarter inch and a steel uh, um, uh, yield stress, uh, stress is uh, 87,000 pounds and then our Z from table 12i is also 5720. Uh, with that continue we have uh, the adjusted connected we're going to look for the uh, um, adjusted ASD connection capacity uh, based on our n it's going to be uh, our n is equal to four uh, in a row we have a four bolts and also in each row and so that's a bolt in each row and then we have um, if we look at the adjustment factor from uh, NDS 2.3.2 CD is equal to 1.6 because we have an earthquake loading on here. That's what we're going to design it for. And of course, because the inside condition, CM, CT, all those come out to equal 1. And one thing we have to find out is that C delta, and what is that going to come out to? So look at the C delta. C delta is from NDS 12.51. Um, uh, from NDS. Uh, marker doesn't work. We just switched. No problem. In the S uh, twelve point uh, five point one, we have um, we have. We look at that table. If we look at our shape, we have the end distance. It's going to be seven inches. So I'm going to say end distance. equals seven inches that is same as a seven time diameter so we do satisfy that table in section NDS 12.5.1 and that's for tension okay and also the same table says your spacing got to be a, a four time diameter so our s is equal four inches which is equal four time diameter so we check that out too and uh, spacing between the row, which we had at four inches. So spacing between rows, and that was four inches. And according to the table we have, it's supposed to be more than 1.5D, which is basically 1.5 times one. So we satisfied that too. <laughs> and also we have to satisfy the edge distance. And the edge distance, our edge distance, which is uh, about four inches, and that's more than what uh, the code was says, which is a 1.5D. So we check that out too. So because of these, we satisfy all these conditions. We can go ahead and say, okay. Um,
our C delta is going to become equal to 1 because of this. We satisfy this condition. So the next thing we're going to Next thing we're going to do is the NDS 11.3.6. we got to calculate uh, CG. And let me write down CG. It takes too long. Uh, it's actually, it's a lot quicker if I uh, snap my finger. So I'm going to go ahead and snap my finger. There. Pretty good, huh? You think I couldn't do it. So here's the formula. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, find each one of these um, uh, M and REA. Let's work on that. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, for uh, a wood to metal bolt connection, and it's the same right there, and that uh, same in DS 11.3C, uh, gamma, that's a nice looking gamma, is equal uh, 270,000. Time d by power of 1.5, and our d is equal one, so therefore this come out to uh, 270,000. And um, psi. The next thing we want to calculate is the uh, EM modulus velocity of the main member. That's basically 1,800,000 psi from table 5a. 1,800,000 PSI, and that's uh, from uh, uh, table uh, 5A, in the S5A. Okay, now we have that, and uh, we're going to go ahead and calculate the uh, the area of the main member, AM, and that comes out to um, 5.125 times 12 inches. So that comes out to uh, 61.5 inch square. And then we have an EM time AM. So now I'm going to have a product of this to EM time AM. So basically this number multiplied by that number. And that comes out to uh, 110 million. Let me write down here. It's too big. So these two number multiply come out 110 million uh, um, 700,000. Okay, so now we have that. Next, we want to find out the module velocity of the steel. We all know that that's the 29,000 KSI or 29,000 uh, uh, million, or we can say 29 by power of uh, um, 6 PSI. The area of the steel, it's going to be... Uh, Quarter inch by uh, eight inches, and there's two of them. So there's two of them. Time 0.25 is quarter inch time eight inches. So that comes out to four inch square. All right. Now we have that. So now we're going to say the product of these two. No, product of these two. Es. As comes out to a large number. One sixteen million. Okay. So now we have that. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to find REA. And REA is basically the lesser of the uh, ES, AS divided by EM, AM, or EM in our case, because our ES is bigger. So the lesser value would be uh, um, This divided by that, so it'd be 110 million divided by 116 million. The million cancel each other out, and that should come out to uh, 
0.94. Okay, and uh, we're going to continue with that. Let me use a different color. Calculate u, which is equal 1 plus uh, gamma time s divided by 2 time 1 divided by uh, EMAM and plus 1 divided by ESAS. And if I plug all those numbers in, I will have uh, 1 plus 270,000, I mean 270 million. No, gamma was 270,000. And then uh, time 4 divided by 2, that's our spacing. And multiply it by this number, which we already have, 1 over divided by 110 million, 10 by power 6, plus 1 divided by uh, 116 million. And that comes out to uh, 1. Okay, I'm going to erase this board and I'm going to start over again. Okay, continue with that. We're going to find out now what M is going to be. So our M is going to come out to uh, uh, U minus square root of uh, U square minus 1, which is equal 1.01 .01 minus square root 1.01 .01 squared minus 1, and that comes out to a 0.861. And uh, 1 plus m comes out to be uh, 1 plus 0 0.861, 1 1.861. And then we have 1 minus m. And that's going to come out to uh, 1 minus 0 0.861, which is uh, 0.1328. Then we would also want to find out m by power n. <coughs> which is um, power 2n, which comes out, m was uh, 0.861 by power 2 times 4. And that gave me 0.3. Another thing I want to find, I want to find this expression right there. 1 plus R E A uh, M by power N. So it's one plus point nine four time M M which came out to be uh, point eight six one point eight six one by power four and that comes out to Point five. CG. Now we can go ahead and calculate CG. And that's basically that right up there. It's going to be uh, 0 0.861 times 1 minus 0 0.3. And divide the whole thing by uh, n, which is 4, times 1.5 time um, 1.861 time, uh, no, minus 1 plus 0.3. I think that came out, yeah, 0.3. And then that whole thing multiplied by uh, 
2.05 divide that by 0.1328 and that came out to 1. To find the uh, adjustment factor our CG came out to almost 1. There's another way we can find it which is easier using a table. If we go ahead and uh, calculate the uh, AM uh, divided by AS, in our case AM was uh, 61.5 divided by 4 and that comes out to 15.3. Uh, uh, if you use the interpolation formula from this table, uh, uh, table uh, I had it on 11.36 which I talked about it, we can find also CG comes out closer to 1. And uh, but the formula give you the exact correct one. I just go that way and get it done. All right. So now we finished that. We're gonna go ahead and find out the adjusted the uh, uh, load capacity P is equal uh, n times z prime, which is equal n time, which is n is basically our uh, bolt times z, which you already calculated ahead of a time. I got it headed down here someplace right there and multiply by the adjustment factor CD and we had uh, CMCT, CMCT, CG, C delta and uh, all those came out equal one except for CD. So our P is going to become four times uh, 5720 times 1.6 bunch of ones. And that's going to come out to uh, um, 73,260 pounds. Okay, so we have finished that. Let's find out the shear from, uh, uh, if we look at the uh, table 5.3.1, which we know our F of V, F prime V is equal uh, F of V time CD, CM, CT, and CVR, which we're going to find CVR from table 5.3. Let me write this down. This one is from uh, table 5.3.10, uh, I believe. I am right. And that basically comes out to uh, uh, 7.2. Therefore, I'm going to have uh, this came out to 265. We know that. And that is from table 5A. Table 5A. And then we have uh, CD is 1.6. Then one one, and this one came out to be uh, point seven two from table uh, five point three ten. That would that number come from, and the whole thing come out to uh, um, three hundred and five psi. This is our adjustment factor for that one, for F of V. So we got both of those. Now let's find the net section area. So if we go to Appendix E, take a look at Appendix E in, in DS, and you will see that uh, First, we're going to calculate net area, and our net area is basically five and a half times twelve, and minus the bolt hold. So I got uh, five point one two five multiplied by twelve minus two bolt hold, two of them, and they are one inch plus one sixteen. So the size of the hole is going to be one sixteen plus the bolt diameter. So it's one plus 1 16th and 
that gave me 50.6 inch square. 50.6 inch square. So now I have that. The next thing I want to find out, uh, Z prime NT. So that comes out to F prime T time net area. And our F prime T came out to 17. F prime T is equal um, F at T times C D C M C T and F at T from the table five A came out to eleven hundred and multiply that by uh, C D is one point six and the other one one and one and that comes out to seventeen sixty PSI. So I'm gonna take that seventeen sixty PSI right here, time the net area, which is 50.6, and that's going to come out to uh, 89,100. So the capacity of that is more than the force 73216 pound. So in here we said, okay, based on this, the force is going to be here, but back here in the tension, we calculated this, so this is going to be more than that. So the shear capacity Grula member is more than a, a force. So now let's continue with this, and we're going to go ahead and calculate the um, rho tear out. Let me erase this here. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the rho tear out from NDS equation 3.2 and 3.3. So it's, it's, I, which I said Z prime um, rho tear out for rho number one, which is uh, basically uh, same as uh, in our case, it's going to be same as the Z prime rho tear out at rho number two. And that's going to come out to be uh, in uh, I, uh, from you see an equation, F prime V and uh, multiply by the area critical, critical, and then divide that by um, 2. Now, to find the a critical area, we got to find out the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, critical uh, uh, spacings to we can multiply it by. So our area critical basically is A critical is equal um, thickness time S. And S is a, a spacing, and in our case, uh, it's going to be, uh, well, let's go ahead and do it, which is going to come out to Z prime RT is equal N. N comes out to be 4. And multiply F prime V came out to 305, if you remember. 305. And the area of critical is going to be uh, 5.125. Uh, time that's the uh, thickness time the uh, spacing which is four inches that's it now if you look at the equation e32 because it says divide by I'm not going to divide by two because we have two row and therefore it's going to be multiplied by two row this two going to cancel out and cancel out so that our number is going to come out to uh, um, twenty-five, two hundred fifty, twenty-five thousand, twenty-five thousand, uh, zero ten, and uh, that's our capacity. Now, uh, for ZRT, for combine both of them. ZRT complete, uh, which is summation of both of them, it's going to be uh, uh, from that formula we showed on board. I is equal one, and in, I, in our case is a root two row, Z prime RT. It's going to be 
25010 plus 25010 and that should give me about 50,020 and that is less than our 73,000 which we calculated our P we calculated at the beginning. Now, continue with this. That was the four row tear out. Let's see if we can do a group tear out. And for our group tear out, remember, we got to calculate the area of the group. That's an important one, area of the group. And that's going to be uh, what we're looking for is right here. the area of the group, all right? So now that area, it's going to be, uh, let me use this color anyway. It's going to be 5.125. And we're going to multiply by, remember this was a four inch space in between them, so from center to center could be four inch. And that, therefore we're going to say time four inch minus two two of them right one on each side one from here and one from there so uh minus two time half of the uh um half of this 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 half of this which is uh, this is inch plus 116 half of that And that will give me a fifteen oh five. Okay, so now I have that. Um, the next thing I want to go ahead and calculate the Z prime group tear out, which is equal Z prime R T row one divided by two and plus z prime row two divided by uh, two and plus the ft time area of the group and if we calculate all that stuff comes out to uh, I was 25010 divided by 2 plus 25010 divided by 2 plus um, 1760 and times 1505. So I end up with uh, 51,400. 98, which is less than our P load, 73, 216. These, this controls, this is the smallest one. And so I wouldn't worry about the group tear out and my tear out and uh, row tear out because we made our spacing kind of big here. Hope you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you did.